who are the happiest and unhappiest fan bases in the SEC? Now, how do you gauge this? How do you gauge who is the happiest and the unhappiest? Especially with it, you know, not being necessarily on site or in the trenches with each and every single fan base in the SEC. Well, you look at on-field results. That's number one, right? Because that trumps all. You look on social media and you talk to folks and you get feedback, if you will. So without further ado, I'm going to do my very best giving my thoughts on the happiest and unhappiest fan bases in the SEC. Let's start on the bright side, which, by the way, I noticed this when making this list. There are a lot more fan bases in this conference that are upset, <laughs> that are that are down in the dumps, that are disgruntled, than there are that are cheerful and happy and ecstatic for what's going on with their respective programs. But as we start on a bright note, the happiest fan bases, you have to start with the Ole Miss Rebels. Like, like is there a happier fan base in the SEC right now than Ole Miss? And I don't even think it's a close margin of the second happiest fan base to the Ole Miss fan base. You look on the field of play. First off, your head football coach is Lane Kiffin. That alone is an electric factory, right? Then you look at what happened on the field, okay? 11 wins, first time in school history that has happened, believe it or not, right? You've got practically your entire team set to come back next year. Oh, by the way, Lane Kiffin, the portal king, has come in and pulled top players from every which way in the transfer portal. Guys like Walter Nolan, Juice Wells, Chris Pooh Paul Jr., uh, Princey Uman Mielin, Tyler Barron, the list, Logan Diggs, the list goes on and on and on. And we enter into a quote-unquote offseason, a preseason, what have you, that has more hype and more energy and more excitement than probably any in Ole Miss football history. I don't think that's I don't think that's over exaggerating, right? Then you look on the hardwood and what Chris Beard and the Ole Miss Rebels are doing there in men's basketball. Like, who would have ever saw this start coming, right? A team that is 2-1 in SEC play has lost one game all season long. I don't have the overall in front of me, but I think it's like 14-1 and or 15-1, and something like that. Ole Miss very well could be an upstart or a surprise NCAA tournament team, a 7 or an 8 seed, what have you. Like, vibes are high. Year one at Chris Beard, zero expectations. Right? There were questions about the hire in regards to, you know, what he's done off the court and some of the personal stuff he's had going on. Nobody ever questioned the type of coach he is, though, and what type of product he could put on the floor. But to have these type of results this quickly. And then you look at baseball. And we're going to start diving into more baseball stuff here in the near future, guys. But I think Ole Miss baseball is set up really well to bounce back. I really do. I think Ole Miss baseball... You know, it can't get much worse than it was last year. Um, you know, a team that uh, won the national championship and then completely missed the conference tournament. But either way, Ole Miss baseball is still always primed to make a run. They've got a great program. That's one of the best programs in the SEC. So vibes are high, though, guys. And admittedly, as you, do, as you can probably tell, as you already knew, like the way football is going really dictates the mood of a fan base. Like, let's, let's just let's call it for what it is, right? Let's call it for what it is. So Ole Miss, I think, is the happiest fan base in the SEC. And I don't think it's even particularly close, at least right now. Now, this is not in any particular order, by the way. But happiest fan bases I've got listed. I've also got the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, I understand Georgia fell short of expectation. I get that in this past season. I totally understand. But guys, here's what you have to keep in mind. Georgia just went, what, 12-1, and one, right? No, 13-1, and one, excuse me. 13-1. and one. No. 
I'm getting my my records mixed up. Either way, Georgia lost one game, SEC title. Yes, 13 and one. I, I for some reason just lost track of the record. Went 13 and one, beat Florida State like a drum. And oh, by the way, the biggest news of the offseason for Georgia, guys, no more Nick Saban. No more Nick Saban. Ding dong, the witch is dead. He's gone. He's done so. He's history. And I know Bama's not going to fall off the map, but for a program in Georgia that had been tormented by Lord Saban himself, that's a huge boost. Also, Georgia hoops has really, I think, overachieved. Georgia baseball, right? There's a lot of feels like positive days on the horizon, right? I think Georgia's going to be a sneaky good team this year in the SEC postseason team for sure. Uh, but again, football is king. And Georgia now, with the retirement of Kirby Smart, or excuse me, retirement of Nick Saban, I'm getting all twisted up. The retirement of Nick Saban, Kirby Smart is now de facto the best coach in college football. Like, there's no question. I don't think there's even a debate. He's the best coach in college football. By far the best coach in the SEC. So, Georgia fans, they're one of the happiest fan bases in the league. Not because they won a national title or because, you know, basketball is doing anything necessarily crazy. Or, but the simple fact that Nick Saban is no longer in Tuscaloosa or no longer the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, that brings a smile to every dog fan's face. And you know Georgia fans are counting down to that ball game in Tuscaloosa. It'll be Kalen DeBoer's SEC opener. And boy, them Georgia fans, they are looking forward to giving him one rude awakening and one rude welcoming, if you will. Guys, I think Missouri's on the list, too, the short list of happiest fans. Again, basketball not going well, but football is king. And you're coming off of a 10-win, or excuse me, 11-win season in which you beat Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. Like, it doesn't get much better, guys. And oh, by the way, the thing that all three of these teams, these these three fan bases, these programs I've mentioned have in common, uh, they're all dreaming of a college football playoff appearance, and those are realistic goals for them, right? So it's a great time to be a Mizzou fan. Again, men's basketball, not great. Baseball, probably going to be picked near the bottom of the SEC East, but football is king. And after the football season that Mizzou had, again, they're not happier than Ole Miss. They're not the top. But I think certainly Mizzou fans have a lot to feel good about right now. Finally, guys, because I'm not going to list, you know, seven or eight teams here, the happiest fan bases in the SEC. I think Tennessee. I think you can throw Tennessee in there as well. Tennessee, guys, Tennessee at this point probably has the most well-rounded athletic department in the SEC. I think you could make that argument. Think about it. In football, right, eight regular season wins, nine with the bowl win. You got Nico coming in, going to be taking over as QB1. Guys, I think Tennessee is a realistic, legitimate playoff contender in 2024. You go 10-2, and two, you're in the college football playoff. I think Tennessee can get to 10 wins. I think Nico is the truth. I think he's going to be that dude under center for the volunteers, right? So you've got incredible optimism on the gridiron. Basketball, Tennessee's one of the best teams in college basketball. Make no mistake, there's no debate there. And then baseball, Tony Vitello has got that thing humming. I really do believe, guys, with Tony Vitello, it's a matter of when, not if, he's going to win a national championship and bring a title to Knoxville. So is there a more well-rounded athletic department right now than what Tennessee is doing, right? Maybe TBD with what does Ole Miss baseball do, right? But even with that, Tennessee's got it rocking on the gridiron. I think they do. They got it rocking on the hardwood, no doubt. And they got it rocking on the diamond with Tony V. So I'll put Tennessee's athletic department and their sports as a whole, what they've got going on against anybody. And that leads to some happy days in Knoxville. Now, let's... Go to the other side of the coin. The unhappiest. Who are the unhappiest fan bases currently? This can change, but currently in the SEC. Guys, I think you got to start with Arkansas. I mean, it is, my goodness, Arkansas fans, I feel for you. I feel for you. A 4-8 and eight football season. Your head coach's seat is scorching going into the 2024 season, right? 
all the good vibes that Sam Pittman had are gone. Dunzo history. Then you're thinking to yourself, if you're an Arkansas fan, okay, well, men's basketball will give us some relief, right? Must in the game. They got a good team coming back. 0-3 in conference play, and you've lost each of the three by double digits. Baseball is like the last saving grace right now. If baseball season does not go well, for whatever reason, if Dave Van Horn's team does not pan out for whatever reason, it's going to be like cruel and unusual punishment for Hog fans. Good news is this. Arkansas should pan out. They're a preseason top five team. They're going to have one of the best pitching staffs in college baseball. They're incredible, right? Like, they're, they're going to be really, really good. But Arkansas fans, <laughs> Arkansas fans are going through it right now. And again, like we mentioned, football's king. And when your football team goes four and eight and has the kind of season they had, it is very, very, very trying times down in Fayetteville. Now, another unhappy fan base, guys. I go to Florida, the Gators. And this really stems from the football side of things, right? Because I think Florida is a really unique case to where, you know, basketball can be doing well and, and baseball can be doing well. But if football's not doing well, and this isn't something we're used to talking about because, I mean, heck, I feel like for as long as we can remember, Florida football has done well. I mean, haven't been a whole lot of off years in Florida Gators football history, at least recent history, like since 1990 when Steve Spurrier got there, right? Like there haven't been a ton of those years. Haven't been a ton of off years, if you will. So to see what Florida is right now, to see what's going on with Billy Napier and, and the struggles in recruiting and, and the portal and, and of course, on the field. And then you look at the 2024 schedule. The energy that I am able to gather from Gator fans, again, it's like, okay, basketball's doing great. Cool. You know, Sully's going to have them ready to go. Cool. That's awesome. Great. Great. But if football stinks, the mood of Gator fans stinks. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it, that sours everything. It sours. And then you look at baseball, too. Like, Florida got to the very last game, lost to LSU last summer, right? Like, it's just, you know, and even Florida, as, as, as good as they've been, I think Florida's a good team. One and two in SEC play. But football, really, the football program being where it is, that, that's the thorn in the side of all Gator fans out there. Guys, I got Vanderbilt on this list as well. Just because Vandy fans have nothing to be happy about. Like that's, that's it. Vandy fans can't wait for baseball season. Football, terrible. Basketball, terrible. Baseball, maybe it's the saving grace. Maybe it isn't. Our friends over at the Door Report, my good buddy Billy Derrick, they're struggling right now, folks. They are holding on for dear life. Another unhappy fan base, guys. I'm going to go with South Carolina. I think South Carolina, one of the unhappiest fan bases in the SEC right now. If you want to know how the South Carolina fan base is feeling, folks, dive down a rabbit hole and spend five minutes on X looking at South Carolina social media. Gamecock Twitter, as it used to be called, when Twitter was still a thing, right? When it wasn't X. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> what you will find. My goodness. Uh, I mean, again, guys, you go five and seven. You, you lose some of your top guys. Juice Wells, the Ole Miss and the Portal. Picked up some guys, certainly, but... I think when you factor in the preseason expectations going into last year, what South Carolina thought they had falling incredibly short of that. Now having to navigate 2024 with a first-time starting quarterback, a gauntlet of a schedule, right? I think basketball has really picked up the vibe. I really do. I think what Lamont Paris is doing, it's, and I'm not saying, again, South Carolina's not at the top of this list. Because basketball's picked up the vibe. I think Mark Kingston and company should have a good baseball team. 
TBD because we've seen Mark Kingston, his ball club, not live up to expectations before, right? But things look good in that regard. But again, football really rules all. Football rules all. And when you're coming off a 5-7 and seven season, one that saw you lose to your arch rival at home when you did not score or, or, or held them, held your opponent without scoring an offensive point, and you still couldn't win the game? Again, and, and by the way, I forgot to mention, the coach that I would say a large portion of the Gamecock fan base wanted fired in the defensive coordinator, Clay White, he looks like there's no signs of that happening. Yeah, it's trying times right now in Columbia, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, and also, by the way, you lost to Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida last year. Three teams you don't even get to play this year, right? You have to go into 2024, brand new schedule. Don't get to play any of those rivals, if you will, those SEC East rivals. Five-game losing streak to Mizzou. And again, just go look on social media. and you, you'll, you'll agree with me. You, you, you go look on social media, spend five minutes entertaining yourself with Gamecock social media. See some of those folks in that fan base. Yeah, you probably launched them to the top of your list. Finally, <laughs> finally, guys, unhappiest fan bases. I put Alabama on here last. I put Alabama just because you lose your head coach, Nick Saban. You know, you lose your head coach and, and, and Bama falls short in the college ball playoff, which is a bad season for the Crimson Tide, right? Again, basketball's going well. Baseball, we'll see. Bama's probably in the middle of the pack type, type of team, if you will. Uh, but, man, the retirement of Nick Saban. I mean, I think folks are probably – like, I think because of the uncertainty of what Bama football is going to be. And I think this was, you know, not just for Nick Saban, but I think for Alabama fans, a really trying season, right? A tough season. Even though you only lost one game and you beat Georgia in the SEC title, you lost two games out of the college ball playoff, but like the ups and downs of it, and it just it didn't look like an Alabama season, right, with all the problems they had. So I'd put Bama down on this list low, low. I think the excitement probably outweighs the unhappiness, but there's as much uncertainty in Tuscaloosa as there's been in quite some time. So happiest, unhappiest, It'll be interesting to see how this changes as basketball, baseball, and spring practice, all these different things, all these different seasons progress. Who gets happier and who falls deeper into misery?